What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the Empire's cloaked TIE fighter variant, the TIE Phantom. In a way, this is the TIE series coming back to its roots, as the entire line was inspired by the Scimitar. Sinar Design Systems produced the cloaked ship used by Darth Maul, and CEO Wraith Sinar decided to try and make a mass-produced series of fighters with twin ion engines. These TIE fighters would be picked up by Palpatine, and became the main fighter for the new Empire. Over the years, it would spawn a ton of variants, but it wasn't until after the Battle of Yavin that Imperial engineers decided to try and reintroduce stealth tech into a Sinar design. The body of this ship would be based on the V-38 Assault Fighter, which is why it doesn't have the eyeball cockpit that is found in nearly every other TIE variant. Grand Admiral Marty O'Batch was selected by Palpatine to lead this project, due to the fact that Batch was an obscure military leader with no political connections, perfect for developing a secret fighter. The first candidate was Hybridium, a type of cloaking crystal that was much more abundant than the rare Stygium. On the outer rim moon Imdar Alpha, their research station was working endlessly to try and solve the problem of double blindness caused by the Hybridium version of cloaking. They could get the Phantom prototypes to cloak just fine, but then the pilots inside couldn't see out, or even detect anything outside of the cloak. Three years of frustration led Bash to ask Palpatine for access to the Tarkin superweapon. This is essentially a bare-bones Death Star, with minimal structures built up around a planet-busting superlaser. Aiden 2 was a known site of Stygium crystals, and though it would be very time-consuming to try and mine down to its crystal core, it would be incredibly easy to use droids to just scoop up Stygium crystals floating around in space. This problem was solved with a single shot from the Tarkin, turning this difficult-to-work world into a debris field of millions of crystals. Now there was plenty of Stygium to go around, and Palpatine saw the project was on the verge of being fully realized, so he allowed the Executor-class Star Dreadnought, the Terror, to protect the research station on Imdar Alpha. Both the TIE Phantom production facility and the Super Star Destroyer were provided with their own cloaking devices, making this entire operation completely undetectable. Final production cost of the TIE Phantom was 365,000 credits apiece, more than six times the cost of a standard TIE, and even more expensive than the TIE Defender. But for that price, you really do get it all. It had a Class 1 hyperdrive, tied with or beating most ships in the galaxy, and even a deflector shield. Its top atmospheric speed of 1,490 km per hour, or 926 miles per hour, is a bit slower than the TIE Defender, but beats out each of the Rebel Starfighters, even the speedy little A-Wing. It also had more than twice the firepower of the TIE Fighter, with five laser cannons, two on the body, and one on each of its three wings. Having a cloaking device, hyperdrive, deflector shield, and five lasers requires a ridiculous amount of energy, which is why the whole body of this ship is just an enormous reactor, more than twice the size of the cockpit. This is also why there are so many large heat radiators and exhausts located on the front, sides, and rear. That being said, when it was cloaked, you couldn't use any of those other features, and it even reduced the speed. To help this a little, there were automatic systems that would disengage the cloaking when the pilot opened fire, and then pop back up as soon as they stopped. But perhaps most important for keeping this thing a secret, was a self-destruct mechanism that would keep it from falling into the hands of rebels. And to run this thing, it required a two-man crew, one pilot, and one gunner. Now when it came to debuting this ship, the Empire chose a pretty clever location. The Drayton Nebula was one of the spookiest places in the galaxy. In the third year of the Clone Wars, Separatist and Republic forces fought a month-long battle over a Stygium mine. The Battle of Drayton was ended by a surprise attack from Hutt and Black Sun forces that mopped up all the survivors on the CIS and Republic sides. This was considered the only battle in the entire Clone Wars in which every Separatist and Republic combatant were killed. The criminals did a great job covering their tracks, and spreading rumors that that part of the galaxy had ghost ships. Supernatural lore gave rise to the name the Drayton Triangle, where these apparitions were said to appear. Many thought these were just silly stories, so the Empire conducted test flights in this area and attacked any rebels passing through. If any were to survive the attacks and tell their friends about a disappearing Imperial ship, they might just discount it as some crazy ghost story. Then trials were coordinated by an Imperial Nebulon B escort frigate, the Mephitis, which led an attack on a series of rebel patrols, but one of these runs was caught on a flight recorder. The Rebellion now had proof that there were more to these stories, and then further information was gained on the location of this stealth ship's fuel source. 
Admiral Akbar thought they had to strike immediately, sending a squadron to destroy the fuel depot and tasking Rookie One to work with Rue Merlin and destroy the main facility. They were able to sneak on board the Super Star Destroyer the Terror, where they found hundreds of TIE Phantoms preparing for a finishing blow against the Rebellion. The agents were able to steal one, operate it into the Terror's core, and set off a chain reaction that destroyed the SSD. But as it blew, it disrupted the main facility's cloak, revealing it to our pair of Rebels. Realizing the fight was not over, they were able to use all the chaos to sneak into the factory and find its main core, destroying it along with thousands of TIE Phantoms. Even better, they were still in their TIE Phantom, so they brought it back to a rebel base so that they could figure out how it works, this way they could develop countermeasures, and would always have the option to use it against the Empire. That was a great plan, until its self-destruct device blew it to pieces. This program took an incredible amount of Imperial resources, and Marty O'Batch had a good idea about what happened to Imperial leadership when they failed the Emperor. He fled to the Outer Rim, but was later assassinated by his own crew. The few TIE Phantoms that were not destroyed ended up being formed into Shadow Squadron, though the ability to produce more of them was lost at this Imdar Alpha facility. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. The TIE Phantom was created for the 1995 video game Rebel Assault 2, The Hidden Empire, and was based on an earlier design for the Lambda-class shuttle. Additional information was released in the sourcebook Stay on Target and Rebellion Era Campaign Guide, but it also got introduced into the X-Wings Miniatures game. So that's it for the TIE Phantom. If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copies of the reference materials used to make this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, if you want to go AWOL, don't force your crew to go with you. And the force will be with you, always.